this time we'll let you stand and you read the word of God. John 14, chapter, verses 1 through 6. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If you were not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And whether I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming unto the Father, but by me.
my wife did something, and uh, she's here, so I can tell you, I can tell on her. Amen. She, Amen. she told me that she was taking me to Philadelphia. Hallelujah. And she told me I was going to a 76ers basketball game, and she told me that she was taking me to Myrtle Beach, mm. down past Virginia, to see my sister. <laughs> and I put on all of these warm clothes. Amen. Long shirts and sweats. And we get to the airport and find out I'm going to St. Thomas where it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I say in 14 years of marriage, she got me <laughs> for the first time. And uh, I was hot when I got off that airplane. Amen. Amen. I, I, I must have sweated off about 12, 13 pounds before we even got in the town. <laughs> but I am grateful because I had the time of my life. It was awesome. She did an awesome job. I thank her again. She, she thinks she got me now, but that's all right. That's all right. We had a good time. And I thought of you all and, and how good God is. I had an opportunity to go fishing and sitting out on that boat, just having a conversation with the Lord, and just Amen. looking at all of His splendor and beauty. And uh, God has so much for us. But we've got to line ourselves up to be able to get it. Hallelujah. It's, it's not about us not receiving it. It's about us having the spiritual mindset to obtain it and use it for kingdom building yes. and not try to hoard it for our own self. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So I want to just share with you today, if I can, I want to share with you a story from the book of 2 Kings. If you would go there with me, 2 Kings. Chapter number seven. Meet me over there. So I can just share a little bit with you this morning. Is that all right? Amen. 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 I believe God is up to something. Amen. And uh, while he's up to it, if we can just keep our minds stayed on him. <laughs> Hallelujah. I believe that everything is going to be better than we think it's going to be. Amen. Second Kings chapter number seven. We have it. Rest on your feet. And we're going to begin at verse number one. And the word says, Then Elisha said, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Tomorrow about this time, a she a flock of fine flour will be sold for a shackle and two sheaves of barley for a shackle at the gate of Samaria. Verse 2 says, So an officer whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Look, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, could this thing be? And he said, In fact, you shall see it with your eyes, but you will not eat of it. Somebody said, That's what doubt will do to you. <laughs> Verse 3 said, Now there were four leprous men. Somebody say four. four. Four leprous men at the gate, at the entrance of the gate. And they said to one another, Why are we sitting here until we die? If we say we will enter the city, the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. Now therefore, come let us surrender to the army of the Syrians. If they keep us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall die. And they rose at twilight to go to the camp of the, Syri of the Syrians. And when they had come to the outskirts of the Syrian camp, to their surprise, no one was there. For the Lord had caused the army of the Syrians to hear the noise of the chariots, and the noise of the horses, and the noise of the great army. So they said to one another, look, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to attack us. Therefore, they arose and fled at twilight and left the camp intact, their tents, their horses, and their donkeys, and they fled for their lives. Verse 8 says, and when the lepers came to the outskirts of the camp, they went into the tent and they ate and they drank and they carried from it silver and gold and clothing 
and went and hid them when they came back and they entered another tent and carried some of theirs also and went and hid it. Verse 9 says, Then they said to one another, We are not doing right. This day is a day of good news and we remain silent. If we wait until morning, light or we wait until morning, light, some punishment will come upon us. Now therefore let us go and tell the king's household. For a few minutes, if I can use this as a subject, I want to use this simple subject as this. You've been blessed by my mess. You've been blessed by my mess. Amen? Amen. Look at somebody and tell them, I don't know what mess you got. But if it's good enough to bless me, bring it up. Amen. Father, thank you now for this time we have to share with all of you and none of me. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. It's amazing because when we look at this particular passage of Scripture, we find that there was a lot going on right now with the children of Israel. Now they are in Samaria, and they are simply faced with this thing that was common called a famine. And if we understand these famines, we find out that now they, they were having a lack of food. They were having a lack of the pure necessities. Amen. Amen. And there were times in the Bible that there were famines that lasted for long periods of time. Mm -hmm. There were also famines that were put in place because of certain structures that God was trying to convey to them or just certain lessons that needed to be um, governed. Amen? Amen. And it's amazing because we find now that in this, Elijah is telling them that, yeah, we've been in a famine, but yet this is what's going to happen about this time tomorrow. Isn't it amazing that no matter how much the, God, the hand of God moves upon a situation or a circumstance, you always going to have somebody in the bunch that's going to have a reason to doubt. Amen, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen, somebody. If you look to the right and you look to the left, and the right person seems like they intact, and the left person seems like they intact, then you must be the doubter. Amen. Amen. If you keep looking at me, don't nobody know I'm talking about you. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so now we find, if we even go back to the sixth chapter, uh -huh. around the 24th verse, we'll find that there, um, um, that it was declared that the, that the famine was going to last until a donkey's head was sold for a certain amount. Uh -huh. And then it said a dove's dung hmm. uh, was sold for a certain amount. And what, what made it so bad was... At this particular time, the donkey himself was one of the, 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 the indication of the, the worst or the poorest type of a situation. So therefore, if a donkey's head was to be so, that was the cheapest, the cheapest, uh, nastiest, uh, lowest, scummest part of the animal to be sold. But if they're saying that it's going to last until... This happens, it lets us know that they were in for a long ride. Amen. 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 And so now we know that Samaria is sitting here in a bad situation. They are sitting here in a situation that is very uncomfortable for everyone. It's almost the same way as how we were living over the last two years in this thing called a pandemic. Right. Have I got a witness? Amen. Our pandemic was simply the same type of uh, famine that they dealt with in Samaria. It, watch this. You, you couldn't go to certain places. It, it, it seemed as if there was a lack of this and there was a lack of that. You, you find out that when you got sick, you were isolated from certain things. Come on up in here, somebody. But it, it got to the point to where we, we were limited to the things that we could do because of a thing that had impacted the whole entire land. Have I got a witness? But isn't it amazing that God's hand was still upon us in the middle of a thing that was supposed to take us out? Yeah, yeah. And so now we find that we find here that it begins to go down when we, when we look and we go down into verse number three. It begins to tell us about four leprous men. Mm -hmm. Now, if you pay attention to this thing called leprosy in the Bible, you will find out that when you have leprosy in the Bible, you are automatically isolated and kicked out of the city. Yeah. Have I got a witness? Yeah. And if you don't believe me, think about when Miriam wind up with leprosy. God allowed her to have leprosy because she put her mouth on uh, <laughs> come on, somebody. She put her mouth on the man of God and God allowed her to have leprosy. Now listen, 
in the Bible, leprosy was an uncurable disease. Oh, yeah. it, it was something that when you got it, you got it, and that was it. But God has the final say so. Yeah. And when Miriam had leprosy, God told him, he, he told Moses, he said, put her out the city until I heal her. In other words, she ain't going to die from this. I'm a healer, but she needs to know that there is a consequence for your action. Yeah. Yeah. Have I got a witness? Yeah. Now, here we find that it's four leprous men sitting at the gate simply because they understood they couldn't go in. Yeah. Because of the disease that they had. Are you listening? Amen. Now, isn't it amazing that he uses the number four? It's four men. And if we look at and pay attention to numerology, we'll find out that four is the number of creation. All right. Have I got a witness? Four is the number of creation. Now, watch this. So, God allowed for four men to be out so that he can create something. Ooh, I want somebody to catch this one. He allowed the four men. To be there, so he created something that was going to be beneficial because of them for the other people. Yes. Have you got it? Yes. So it said this, listen, he said there were four leprous men sitting outside of the gate. The four leprous men understood that we're in a bad situation while there's a bad situation going on. Have you got that? Have you ever been at a place to where you were in a bad situation, but then your situation turns out to be worse than the situation that you were in? Yeah, right, right, right. Now you're ostracized because your condition is worse than the situation, and now you're ostracized. It seems as if now there's nothing going to happen good out of this, but God is the kind of God that he will allow the worst in you to turn out to be the best in us. Have a witness? And so he allowed these leprous men, watch, they didn't do like some of us do today, Josh. They didn't get out there and start wobbling in their pity. They didn't start sitting and saying, oh my goodness, we got this and now there's no food over there and we can't do this. And I, They made a statement. They said, if I go in here into the city, they said there's a famine in the city. Not only was it a famine in the city, but they know they were going against the ordinances of the city yes. had they went in the city being leprous. Yes. Have I got a witness? Yes. But when you're in a condition, sometimes you say, I ain't got nothing to lose. Mm. So I'm going to go forth wherever because no matter what happens, I'm still going to be ahead. Amen. Have I got a witness? And it's not enough of us that will sit and say, no matter what the circumstances is going to be, at this point, I ain't got nothing to lose. So therefore, I'm going to let it all hang out with hopes that somewhere down the line, I might be able to overcome. Amen. So the Bible says that they talked and they said, if we go in here as a family, so, so we ain't got nothing to eat. We're going to get kicked out. and ain't no nothing going for it. But if we go over here to Syria, mm -hmm. we can go to the enemy's camp. Watch this. They, they said we can go to the enemy's camp. And if they let us live, then it's all right. Mm -hmm. At least we'll take a chance of getting something to eat. Yeah. A place to lay down. Amen. Even if I become captive, at least I got a chance in life. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, so desperate times, it causes us to have desperate measures. Have I got to? Y'all gonna help me here? So the Bible says that they made the choice that we're going to just go ahead and go towards the enemy's camp, mm -hmm. simply because I don't know that if the enemy's camp understood that they had leprosy, if they would have kicked them out or not. But yet, we know that the ordinance of the children of Israel was, if you had this thing, you could not be up in here with us. Amen. Have we got a witness? Hallelujah. It's almost like going into a restaurant. They want to see your vaccination card. They, yeah. they want to make sure you ain't got the COVID. Amen. They want to make sure you ain't got no symptoms of the COVID. Because if you got any symptoms, you can't come up and come oh, on. Right right and it was just like that back then. You, you had leprosy. You can't come around here. This is something that you're not going to inflict on us because this is something that we cannot get rid of. Yes. And so now they said we're going to go towards the enemy's camp. Now watch what God did when they got towards the enemy's camp. Listen, remember we talked about the number four and how God creates through the number four. Isn't it amazing, Josh, that God created a sound that sounded so real that before they got to the camp where the enemies were, the enemies were already gone. I don't think y'all caught that one right there, but listen, it was no motion picture pop. There was no, there was no 3D sound. There was, there was no sound effects. There was, there was none of that stuff. But God created 
a sound that was so real that the enemy says, hold on a minute. We got these Egyptians and these Hittites coming to kill us. And they got up and they began to move away and left everything that would be a blessing. I want to right 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 That was going to be a blessing to the place where the lepers got kicked out of. Without them even understanding that there was a blessing on the horizon waiting for them. Uh, but he took four men that he had to set outside and he had to create something in them in order for them to understand that God was moving on their behalf and it wasn't for them but it was for everybody. Have I got a witness in here? And so now we find that these four men, they went and they said that now they get to the camp where all the goods was but nobody was there. And when they saw this moment, I agreed sat in for a minute because they went in and started taking stuff and hiding stuff for themselves. But isn't it amazing that when God is on the inside of you or you're connected to him, that every so once in a while, that little man will stand up inside of you and it will tell you, hold up, slow up, you're doing something a little bit wrong. You need to back up for a minute and rethink what you're doing. Because what you're doing at this moment right now is not right in the eyesight of God because now you have walked into a creature creating blessing that you can share with everybody else in spite of your condition. I wish I had somebody here. I, when I laid in the hospital simply sick with COVID, I didn't let my condition keep me from encouraging and blessing the people of God. But I kept on the phone and telling them God loves you and you have been empowered to do the work of the Lord. Continue to press on. Continue to do the things that you need to do. I'm laying in the hospital bed. My wife had a birthday coming up. I'm making phone calls and getting delivery sent. Yet I am fighting for my life, but I'm making sure she got a good birthday. Because when God positions us to be a blessing to someone else, we can't let our condition be the thing that blocks us from doing the will and the work of the Lord. So these men, the Bible says that they went in and they all began to stop for a minute and revamp and think to themselves and says, hold on a minute. If we be silent, we just as wrong as this, 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 this family is to attack us the way it is. But yet we have come into something that is major. For one, we can't take all of this for ourselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and for two, if we tried to, we would be wrong laughing at them because we can't go join them, but they can't come have none of this. <laughs> But when you know that the God in you is bigger than the situation that you're dealing with, it's not about what's going on with you, but it is all about what can go on through you. Have I got a witness in here? And when God is still allowing you to have breath in your body, then that means he is still utilizing you to be a blessing to something or somebody. Amen. And so therefore, they began to revamp and they went back to the city. And they allowed, now watch this, they couldn't go in, but there was still somebody tending the front portion of the gate. And they went and gave a message, but isn't it amazing that even though they sent the message in to the king, the king still didn't jump just because he said that it was good. But the king says, according to the Bible, the king sent out a chariot. He sent out a few men to go and spy the land out to make sure that it was exactly what he said it was. Because I don't know about you, but everybody that's with you can't go with you. And I know for a fact that there's some folk right now that will come and tell you because you've been kicked out of something. There's some folks that'll come and tell you about some goodness that's waiting, and all they're doing is setting up an ambush to help take you out. And so therefore, the king was smart enough to say, hold on a minute. Just because you said it, it don't mean that it's really, really like that. So he sent a few men out to go out and check out the land. And when they got over their jobs to check out the land, it was exactly what they said it was. And I need somebody to know that now when God sends the men and the women of God to come and proclaim something over your life and your situation, he is faithful enough to see it through. Because remember, Elijah had just said to them, by this time tomorrow. Hallelujah. I know they were looking like, how is this going to happen this time tomorrow? We ain't got no to the water. We ain't got no to the bread. We ain't got no to the meat. We ain't got no, listen, we ain't got two wooden nickels to rub together for to make a fire, let alone having something to eat. So where is this flour going to come from? Where is all of this going to come from? But I need somebody to know, just because the camp wasn't faithful enough to believe God, 
God let a man of God be in the middle of the camp to proclaim his goodness. And whether he can physically see it or not, he heard the voice of the Lord say, by this time tomorrow, I want somebody to catch this. Stop always waiting for the evidence of it to come. And go back to the results of God doing it for you over and over again. And hang on to the fact that he says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of things not seen. You've got to believe God no matter what it looks like. Because if he said it, that's it. And the Bible says that Elijah told them, uh, by this time tomorrow, this right here is going to take place. And I know for a fact that they had forgot about the four lepers that had been sitting outside of the land. Yes. And they, they had wrote them off because they couldn't be a part of us no more. Amen. But I need you to let, I need you to tell somebody right here that when man writes me off, God writes me up. Man can write me off and take, throw me away. But God will pick me up and use me to benefit them and everybody else. Because God took the trash that was thrown out the city and made the trash walk into something that he created for them the number four. And when he created it, he didn't create it just for the lepers. But he created it to make sure that the, the children in Samaria would know that the word of God was true. Because by that time, the next day, they had gotten word, they had went and examined, they had went and found out, and they had went and known that we had went from rags to riches in 24 hours. And I want somebody to catch this because when God puts his hand on you, it doesn't matter who he uses, but when he says it's going to be more better, it's going to be greater later, you better make sure that you can rejoice while you're waiting for the later to arrive. But when God said it now, I want you to find out the same thing happened to Jehoshaphat. Have I got a witness in here? The Bible says that Jehoshaphat got word that the enemies was coming to get him. And they laid down on their face and they fasted for a little while. God used some of them to do what? Pray. He used some of them to do what? Worship. He used all of them to fast. And when they got up to go to the battlefield, Pastor Weston said they got to where the fight was supposed to happen. And instead of fighting, they walked into picking up the blessing because of what they did. When God says, I got my hand on you, God's got his hand on you. And I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm going to tell Cedar Grove and Cornerstone this morning. Stop looking at what had been and start looking at what is. Stop looking at who was and stop looking at I am. Stop worrying about what didn't happen and start focusing on what God is about to do. Because I want you to know something. God is creating something right now. That when you look up one time you're going to walk into a blessing that's too big for you to receive. And all God wants to know is are you worthy of being blessed because of my mess? Folks have messed us up, has talked about us, has scandalized our name. But that's the same mess that's going to bless us. And I know that there's some people, Pastor West, that suffers with something called spiritual leprosy. Have I got a witness? They got these spiritual spots all on the inside. It, it affects their praise. It affects their worship. It affects their giving. It affects the way that they love. It affects the way that they think. It affects the way that they move. And every so once in a while, God has got to put that leprosy-minded person outside for them to realize and understand that if it was not for the Lord, who was on their side, but grace and mercy now has allowed for us to even love on the leprous. Have I got a witness here? So when you find some spiritually leprous people, our job is to pray for them because you don't know if God is going to use them to be the one that brings us the blessing. But just while you're living, make sure you know who's rocking with you. Because everybody that's with you, sure enough, can't go with you. So at the end of the day, what I want y'all to know is don't count nobody out because of what's going on in them. Because the least of them, the Bible says, can wind up being the first of them. Have I got a witness? The ones that's the tail, God says he can make them the head. The ones that's the borrowers, God says he can make them the leaders. Have I got a witness? And I don't know about y'all, but the leprous men had enough God on the inside to say this ain't about us, but it is through us that 
God will allow for the famine to be over. Have I got a witness? And all I want y'all to know is no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're dealing with, no matter how bad it is, just understand God can take the best and make it out of your worst and be a blessing for a whole bunch of people. Just stand still and watch his salvation. Stand still and don't give up. Stand still and let him create. Stand still and watch him move. Stand still and know that he's God. Stand still. Stand still. Stand still. Listen for the Lord. Move when he say move. Talk when he say talk. Don't be bitter. Just be better. Let your mess be a blessing. In the name of Jesus, you might be broke, but God is still God. You might be sad, but God is still God. You might be sick, but God is still God. If God can use a donkey to talk to a prophet, he can use your mess to be a blessing. Have I got a witness? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Have I got a witness? It's amazing. Mm. Mother, when I was reading, and it said that God made the sound of the chariots and the horses mm -hmm. sound so real yes. that the people that had the potential, the potential to hold me back mm. ran from something that wasn't even there. Amen, amen. I'm trying to help somebody right here. Mm. Listen to me. If you allow God to God can run your enemies away with something that he creates. Amen. Right? Hallelujah. That he'll never let appear. Yes. <laughs> they never saw the army. Uh -huh. But the sound was so real yes. that they didn't want to take a chance of facing the army. Hallelujah. <laughs> it didn't matter how many of them it was. Uh -huh. The sound was loud enough to make them believe uh -huh. that how many was coming was more than how many was there. Yes, yes. yes. And I don't know about y'all. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. But my God got a way of surprise and outcast it. They had been at the bottom of the barrel. Pop would always say this. He said, I've been so low that I had to look up just to see the bottom. Hallelujah. And when these four men were sitting in this situation, that's where they were. They were so low that they had to look up to see the bottom, Josh. Because mm -hmm. yes, they said, if I go to the left, I'm going into a city that I ain't supposed to be in. Mm -hmm. And that city is in a bad condition themselves. Yes. And if I go to the right, I'm taking a chance of dying in the hands of the enemy. Yes. But isn't it amazing that when God puts something in your spirit, Amen. God will send you to the place that you would never thought you would go. Amen. Because he had already set it up for you to be there. Hallelujah. Have I got a witness? Amen. It's amazing that he set them up to go to the enemy's camp. Amen. Not to face the enemy, but he goes to face the blessing that was in there left by the enemy. That's why when he says, I will make your enemies your footstool. Yes, yes, yes. I need you to understand that God says that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous and the just. Yes, yes. Have I got a witness here? Yes, yes. And even though you don't see it when God is ready for you to have it, he'll send the least of us to go in and get it because yes, the most of yes. us are going to get it and not share it with nobody. Yes. Woo, keep looking at me. Nobody know I'm talking to you. Amen. Yes. But there's some of us that have hit the lottery and forget about the people that walked with us while we was blind. As a matter of fact, lift you to down on the body too. Amen. Yeah. Have we got a witness? Amen. But God knows who to position Amen. in the position mm -hmm. to be the blessing from Him. Yes. And not try to, try to try to take the credit from him. Amen. Because those four leprous men could have came in and says, here, I'm going to give you this, I'm going to give you that, I'm going to give you the other, but this is what it's going to cost you. Mm -hmm. But instead of that, instead of hoarding it for themselves, Mike, the Bible says that they went back to the place that they were just kicked out of. Yes. They went back to a place that they wasn't welcoming. Hallelujah. They went back to where they were ostracized because of what was going on with them. Yes. 
and says, yeah, I may not be welcome in here, yes. but I came to give you something that would be welcomed by everybody. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What got me, though, is this. He never read at the end of the story whether or not these men were ever accepted back with the legacy or not. Mm -hmm. But it didn't matter whether or not they were accepted in or not. They were accepted into the hands of God because they were used by God. Amen. And they successfully completed the assignment that was given to them by God. Amen. Have I got a witness? Amen. And it's amazing because when you read the Bible, you'll see how when God used these little things like this. And you'll say, well, we never knew. We never heard nothing else from them or whatever. Their assignment was over. Yes, yes. And it's not just a good read for us to find out what happened to them, because if we find out what happened to them, then we miss the point of what God was doing through them. Amen. And what God was simply doing through them was saying this, do not allow your condition to be the thing that affects your position. Mm -hmm. Because your position in what you're doing through me and for me and through me is far bigger than what's going on to you and through you. Amen. But I totally believe that the same way God healed Miriam, just because the Bible didn't say it. He used them and they surpassed what God called for them to do. They did it in the spirit of God. They did it in the spirit of excellence. I wanted to believe that God healed them because they did what God called them to do. But either way it go, watch this. Them wasn't hungry. Amen. Pop, them wasn't naked. All right. So I think them had some gold. Them had some horses and some donkeys. <laughs> them had some fine linen. You know why? Because they got some for themselves. Amen. But they didn't keep it all for themselves. Yeah. What am I trying to say? The joy that you have, don't keep it all to yourself. Amen. The love that God has given you, don't keep it all to yourself. Have I got a witness? And I, church, church folk don't like this part here, Pop. The money God bless you with. Yes, sir. Don't keep it all to yourself. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Because you can't take it with you. Yes, and if God positioned you to, to be blessed so that you can be a blessing, yes. then I need you to know that where you're going to is far greater than where you're at now. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. The whole world of this story that I simply believe is this. It didn't say that these men did something wrong, mm. and that's why they had leprosy. Yes. It didn't say that the leprosy was a curse. Mm. It didn't say any of that. But what it simply says is that God used these leprous men to be a blessing to a nation of people. Mm -hmm. And I need you to know that when you go all through the Bible, God began to use different men and women yes. to fulfill not just prophecies, mm. but to give messages yes, and to do different things to make sure that they understood God's hand moving. Yes. Amen. If you remember, if you remember, if you remember the different stories, remember when 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 Baal was acting crazy. Mm -hmm. They were worshiping Baal. And God says, he was Elijah too. He told him, he said, look, I, 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 he finished doing what he's doing. I want you to put some wood on stuff on the altar. Then I want you to wet the whole altar. Amen. Wet it up. Mm -hmm. And when he set fire from heaven, it burnt up everything. Amen. Are you listening to me? Mm -hmm. Because when God positions you to do something, he's going to allow them to know that what he does through you, you couldn't have done. Amen. When the three Hebrew boys were in the furnace and came out, mm. Nebuchadnezzar says, that got to be God. Mm -hmm. Are you listening? Yes, sir. When, the, when the children of Israel came across the Red Sea, mm -hmm. if Moses could hold up his staff yes. and the Red Sea would part, yes, yes. I think Moses would be holding up that staff, parting everything, everywhere he go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but because we understood it was for a purpose that God had allowed for his people to know and understand mm -hmm. that not only am I God, but I'm with you. Amen. Yes. So God used anything mm -hmm. to make sure that he can convey his message. Mm -hmm. And through that, now we find out that these leprous men, mm -hmm. these yeah. leprous men, mm -hmm. did not wallow in their pity. Mm -hmm. But yet they kept it moving. Mm -hmm. And God allowed them. And that takes you to have some kind of faith and confidence yeah. in the man. Yes, Lord. Despite of what I'm going through. Yes, yes. 
yet will I trust him. Yo, Lord, though you slay, yet will I trust you. Every time I sit there, they stick them needles in my eyes. I say, God, even with this needle, yet will I trust you. I leave out, eyes be blurry, you can hardly see, but I sit and I say, Lord, I'm depending on you yes. to let your will be done. Yes. And if you take the sight where I can't see, I know that you're going to make sure that I can do what I what you called me to do. Yes. Because my job ain't to be so perfect that, that, that I can brag about it, but my job is to be imperfect so God can be perfected through me. Yes. Yes. Come on and hear somebody. Yes. So when it's all said and done, I don't know what your leprous mm -hmm. condition is. It could be depression. Yes. Amen. It, yeah. it, 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 can, it can be gluttony. Yes. It can be greed. It can be lying. It can be womanizing. Right. Yes. Whatever your leprous condition is, yes. sit at the feet of God. Yes, yes. Because God can use your mess mm. yes. to be a blessing. Yes, hallelujah. To so many people. Yes. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, make my mess. Bless you. In Jesus, name. In Jesus' name. Amen. All Amen. eyes closed, all heads bowed. Father, we thank you. Yes. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. For we know and understand, God, that none of us are perfect. Hallelujah. Your word declares that we all sin and fall short of your glory. Yes. The good thing is, God, that you see in us. Lord. The ability to bless others through us. Yes. So we ask you, Lord God, that you yes. just continue to rest your hand upon us. Yes. yes. Keep your hand on our minds so that we won't think the things that are not conducive to who you are. Yes. 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 But we give you our best mm -hmm. in its entirety. Yes. And ask you, God, to bless us yes, Lord. in the core of our best. Mm -hmm. Bless somebody else, allow them to see God that it's not what I'm going through. Yes, yes. But it is who's going through it with me. Hallelujah. Your word declares that you'll never leave me nor forsake me. Yes. And I believe that now. Yes, mm. Lord. So I understand, God, that you allow for things to happen, but at the same time, you yeah. use those things. Yes. To become a blessing. Mm. Yes, Lord. It's amazing because when we look at the woman with the issue of blood, we found that she had a bad condition. Yes. The lessons that we learned from that, God, we, we, don't see where, uh, we don't see it written where it blessed many of people, God, but we look at the story today and it blesses people all across the land because yes. folks understand that yes, Lord. if you can rely on you, yes. just one simple touch yes. can dry up everything that's negative in our life. Hallelujah. And in spite of it all, Father God, you'll still get the glory. Yes. We thank you, God, about thank how you. you showed us how you were healing the, the sick and giving sight to the blind and yes. allowing the mute to talk and allowing the deaf to hear. And we know, oh God, that you are still doing the same thing now. Amen. So, God, we ask you to use us even more. Yes, Lord. Let us be vessels, Father God, that you can depend on. Yes. To not complain when we're going through things that we don't understand. Yes. But to know that in all things, God, we can rejoice. Yes. Knowing, Father God, that you are our strength. Hallelujah. You are our portion. Yes. Can we just give your name praise, honor, and glory? Hallelujah. I'm asking that you bless everyone under the sound of my voice right yes. now. Yes. Amen. There's somebody here right now, God, that may be feeling sick in their body. Yes. There may be someone, God, that has some things heavy on their mind. Hallelujah. There may be someone in here, Father God, that may be confused about some things that are going on around them. Yes. Yes. But let them know right now, God, that you're the God that says high and looks low and never yes. makes any mistakes. Yes. 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 And that they can just trust in you beyond what they are feeling and what they are going through. Yes. That you can not only bring them out, but you can also provide a blessing for someone else through what they're going through at this moment. Yes. Yes. We thank you. We honor thank you. We praise your name, God. Thank you. We give your name all of the glory. Yes. Now, while every head is bowed, while every eye is closed, this is a time in the service yes. where if someone wants to rededicate their life mm. or they want to give their life to Christ for the first time for the pardon of their sins, that is you. You simply raise your hands where you are. Say, I'm going to rededicate my life or give my life for the first time. Mm. Amen. Amen. And then you may be looking for a church home. 
and there are two great churches that are in here right now. Amen. If you're looking for a church home yes. and you want to be a part of us, just simply raise your hand and say, I love it over here. I believe God is about to do something great. And I just want to do my part. Yes. If that's you, just raise your hand where you are. Amen. <clears throat> While we see that there's none and there's still room at the cross, yes. God, we bless you. We honor you and we praise and yes. glorify your holy name. Mm. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 God shared something with me this morning, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do exactly what he shared with me. He said to, to extend the opportunity for two people to testify. And the reason why I believe he wants someone to testify is because the word declares that people overcome by the power of our testimony. And we ought to be grateful enough and glad enough in God mm. or for God yes. that it don't have to be this super, super big old gigantic thing for us to want to stand up yes. and tell about his goodness. Hallelujah. But just because he woke us up, yes. that's enough of a testimony. Right Hallelujah. There. So if we get just two people, just two people to just get up and just share something that God yes. has done for you. Hallelujah. In the last seven days, Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Yes. Go ahead, Josh. Uh, pretty much, um, this week, uh, I had some friends of mine. Oh, I'm sorry. Come up there excuse so me, they excuse can excuse hear you, me, too. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Yeah. I just want to say, um, I had a little situation this week where uh, some people that I know, they want to call you your friend, you know, and uh, say that they're real people and stuff like that. But um, there's situations that come up where, you know, people want to lend or a borrow and stuff like that and you help them out. But um, people, I guess, take it for granted. And, you know, they see the goodness in you, but they try to, you know, just try to take advantage of you. And um, this, this one day, he, me, um, he wanted to borrow $10 from me. And um, I let him do it. But um, I asked for the ten dollars back a couple of days so often, and it was a problem to give it to me. But it's not about how much the money is; it's just the principle about you know, if you need something, you can you can get it, but give it back to somebody that's letting it to you. Amen. But it was a problem, and all of a sudden, people want to fight and try to tase me and a whole bunch of stuff. But you know, I don't let that phase me because I can get out of character. But I let myself be. You know, I just give it up to God and just let it be what it is. So now, I don't really associate with the people, but you know, he sends me messages talking about apologize and all oh, this, this and that and stuff like that. But you know, it just, you know, you just let people be who they are. And then you just be who you are, which is a good person. You know, God has shown who they are, you know. You just gotta, just continue being you. And just continue being good. And uh, everything else will fall in place. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Lord, your peace. the Lord said he'll fight your battles. Yes, yes. You got one more? I said two. I don't know why he said two, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to say I'm going to call two. Is there uno mas? Anyone? Anyone? Well, praise the Lord. I praise did what he told me to do. Huh? Well, he didn't tell me to tell about my testimony. He said to me. Well, my testimony is good. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Two years ago this time, I didn't know I was going to still be here. Amen. But I'm here. And uh, um, uh, not only am I here, but I don't have all of the effects that everybody's been saying that you're supposed to have or yes. that you would have. Yes. And through it all, you know, God is still blessing. Amen. Not only that, but about six months ago, um, God blessed me with a, a new family. Amen. They call Cedar Grove. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's a testimony in itself. Amen. Yes. Amen. And uh, we're glad to be here with you. Hallelujah. We love y'all. Amen. Amen. And we Amen. know that there's greatness in store. Yes. We know. We we we've been waiting. For, we've been waiting for this pandemic to ease up so we can do some things. And and and, and it's easing up. Yes. It ain't gone. Hallelujah. 
It ain't gone. So we can't get out here and be wild and act as if everything is, is normal. Amen. Amen. But it is easy enough. It's easy enough enough for us to start putting some things in place. Hallelujah. So that as it continues to dwell on the way, we can begin to move forward. It's almost like we got our foot on the gas pedal, but we're not pressing it down too fast yet. Amen. 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 And then, then we're going to watch God move. Mm -hmm. We're going to watch him move. Amen. 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 He's just getting us ready for that great day. Yeah. Amen. 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 Well, if all minds are clear, let's prepare for our love offering. Amen. Let's Amen. prepare for our love offering. And we're going to have Sister Katie play us some happy music. <laughs> <laughs>